Ty Lee Ellis here with this month's installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. And we're continuing with my friend Tom Crawford. Tom has probably been a CEO longer than almost anybody we've ever heard of. And not only that, but a very successful one and a great human being and great friend. Tom, it's so good to have you back again. For those of you who might have missed last month, you'll want to go back and pick that up. But Tom CEO'd and founded his first company in 1984. Heritage, Southern Heritage Insurance Company, a publicly traded company, the first one insurance company since 1950. So he was a, a groundbreaker there, a real entrepreneur, and then went on to be CEO of several other large insurance companies, and then Crawford & Company, which was not related to him, Crawford, but uh, the largest uh, claims uh, settlement company in the world. Tom is now has his own Crawford Consulting and Coaching, and consult with CEOs and leadership teams to help them develop accountability and be successful. So Tom, so good to have you here. You're a fountain of wisdom in this area of leadership and accountability and uh, we can learn so much from you and I so appreciate you being here. So Tom, today I thought we'd continue on. One of the things I know about you is that you really appreciate human beings and that has influenced your leadership. Tell us a little bit about how you see that and why it's so important, you think, for leadership. Well, I think your greatest asset in a company is your people. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll remember years ago when the book came out, uh, The Customer Comes First, mm -hmm. and uh, I was invited to speak downtown Atlanta by the University of Georgia, and I stood up and I said, I don't agree with the book. I think the most important thing you have to have in a company is people who are excited and work as a team to deliver uh, good service to the client or the customer. And so I think the, the associate comes first. And so I practice that. I, I want them to be in an environment where they can realize their own dreams, mm -hmm. their own career paths, and still push the company forward in the right mm -hmm. direction. So paying attention to people and treating them with respect and dignity is the best asset you can have in a company. They get excited, guess who's going to be happy with the service they get? Yes. Okay. Customer, uh, happy associates make happy customers. Right. And Gallup has done a lot of research to prove that actually the engagement of your associates directly impacts the engagement of your customers over time, which directly impacts the bottom line. So it's scientifically proven this thing that you've known and been operating on is now scientifically proven. Well, that's great, and I, uh, I value that so much. You know, we, in my recent book, uh, Engage with Honor, Building a Culture of Courageous Accountability, the, one of the steps in there is to connect. The leaders must connect with their people, connect based on their differences and their uniqueness, like you manage me differently than you would manage my wife, for instance, uh, very different, but also to connect with the heart. Because when you connect with someone's heart, they know their, they know their value. And it takes so little sometimes to actually show the person that they are important to you, that they're valued and they have dignity and that is such a powerful thing to inspire people along the way. Well, thank you for that. I also remember you mentioned about accountability and CEOs and sometimes their concerns about being accountable and uh, especially to their boards or maybe even holding people accountable below them. So could you talk to that a little bit about accountability and maybe the fear or concerns that CEOs might have? Well, the life, uh, that longevity of a CEO in this country is probably three or four years. And so there's a natural uh, fear of, you know, lasting longer than three or four years. But accountability to me brings me stability. Mm -hmm. uh, building accountability it starts at the top and goes all the way down through every level of the company to the mailroom, mm -hmm. uh, to the clerks, to the people at the uh, entry level. Uh, they have accountability if, if it's handled right by the leadership. And that all revolves around communications. It, it revolves around being touchable as a CEO, uh, where people can walk up and, and talk to you and feel comfortable. And that's the type of environment that I want to build and there's a way to do it. And what I try to do through my coaching is to give the tools to the company to allow great communications, not just at the top, but all the way through the organization. Mm. Wow. So how does that go? I see that going down. What about the CEO going up a little bit more? And there, you and I were talking about earlier, I, I think that sometimes people are, they don't, they don't want to be accountable. Well, they don't want to set clear goals because then if they're clear goals, 
then uh, I'm going to be held accountable and if I don't make them I'm in trouble and so they would rather have it more gray area here let's just keep it not real clear. Well to back that up uh, there's a person uh, that's world renowned for buying companies and fixing them and selling them and his comment and I saw this in the magazine and I believe it 100 percent that 70 percent of CEOs don't want clear accountability mm. of the companies he's buying and mm. he's buying big companies mm. and I see that when I'm talking to CEOs or I have CEO meetings uh, I see that there's a lot of CEOs that don't want clear accountability why uh, you said it uh, in a con prior conversation we had wanted a little wiggle room mm -hmm. uh, want gray area uh, you don't want it clear to the board because, quite frankly, uh, you've got to have confidence in yourself and your team if you want to establish clear accountabilities in your organization. And a lot of CEOs don't want that. They want the wiggle room. And I've never understood that, uh, but they do. It's just there. Right. But what you like is you like to have a number. Tell us about how you like to set that number that, and show them, your board, how that can be measured. Well, I actually draw pictures. Uh, I use graphs. Mm -hmm. And my most famous graph that I use is a 12-month moving graph. Mm -hmm. And basically, you're, you're talking about your major objectives, growth, profit. Uh, there's other objectives depending on what the status of the company is. And I want to, from profit, a uh, growth standpoint, uh, you're at this level today, where, and you were at that level yesterday, where you are today, and where you're going to be you know, in the future of the, of the next 12 months and 36 months. Uh, you can, there's no wiggle room. If you draw that picture and put it on a 12-month moving graph and you tell the board, here's where I'm taking over. This is when I'm the CEO. And you need to pay attention to this every quarter of where we are and where it's going and why. And there could be reasons why it goes down. Take away the, the fear of something not going quite the way you want it to by knowing the business reasons why. Mm -hmm. And so I answer questions to the board and to the people in the company because some things I can't do. What's the business reason why? And I think it's very important to establish in a company. Right. So again, communications, building trust. You want, you want to be up front with the board, lay it all out and let them know where you stand and what you're striving for and if something happens and you see we're not going to make that then you communicate with them and let them know and that's right same thing, that with, same thing with analysts you know i don't run companies quarter to quarter i never have and i think it's a terrible thing that we get into you know you miss it by a penny or a nickel or a dime well if you're building sustainable positive changes in the company mm -hmm. that's good and it may take you six months a year to establish a foundation to really move the company sure. forward in the right direction. But it's not going to be, you know, I'm going to give you this profit in a quarter. It's going to be this profit two quarters from now. I paint a picture of how we're going to get there. And I want steady, sustainable profit and growth in the company. Good. And it comes from communications lead. Yeah. There's nothing more important. And there's one thing I want to add here that's really important to me, you, is to value the people. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to communicate to the people? Well, I have a saying that, that I've developed over the years is that knowledge is powerful. Knowledge shared is more powerful. And knowledge from the people that's in the company who touch it every day mm -hmm. is the most powerful knowledge of all. Wow, that is so powerful <laughs> for me. I love that and so I think we can Oh, we've all learned a lot today, but that, that nugget right there, knowledge is powerful, knowledge shared is, is more, more powerful. powerful, and knowledge from the people, the associates, is the most powerful knowledge of all. Wow, that's wonderful. Tom, thank you so much. Great having you here, and so glad you're in our community here in the Atlanta area, but glad that you're sharing around the country and around the world. I know you're on some boards that, uh, over in the Middle East and Europe and so on. So congratulations on your continued success. Thank you. Thank you and look forward to seeing you again uh, next month and be sure and check out Engage with Honor, uh, building a culture of courageous accountability. I think you'll see that the things that Tom has been talking about, I was working on over here from my life experience and that's why you and I click so well as we both have these different experiences. Yours are much more significant than mine and I'm kind of in your trail here following along but uh, we think a lot alike, and that's why it's so good to have you here. Thank you so much. We'll see you next month.